everyone. Welcome to another edition of News Generation. My name is Ifwa Akwa Harrison. Coming up on the show, 38 students of the Agri Memorial Senior High School finally registered for the WASI examination. Students of the Ghana Law School in Accra have a mock court session. We'll tell you what that is all about. We explore how life on lockdown affects children in Sierra Leone and we meet the 12-year-old advocate of girls' education, all in the next half hour. Please stay with us. Catch up with us on social media. On Facebook, it's News Generation GH, and on Twitter, it's at News Gen GH. Now, the West African Examination Council says it has registered 38 final year students of the Agri Memorial Senior High School for the WASI exam examinations, which starts on Monday. The school had initially refused to register the students because they owed fees. However, the students were registered on Thursday after the intervention of the Ghana Education Service. Head of WAIEC, Reverend Samuel Mai Olenu, says measures have been put in place to ensure students take the practical exams they missed. And he joins us on the telephone lines now. Welcome to News Generation. Thank you. Now, what arrangements did you have to make with the school to allow the 38 students to run, to write? Well, the Ghana Education Service made a presentation to us. And um, we had to go the extra mile to get them registered. So we asked that um, their names should be submitted, and um, we worked on it. So they are duly registered okay. to take the exam. Okay. And when you say go the extra mile, what exactly does that mean? Of course, you know the registration is over and it has been closed. So, and uh, all arrangements for the exams have been completed. So we had to do something extra mm. to get them, you know, to write the exam. Okay. So that is what I mean by going the extra mile. Okay. Um, so when will the students write their practicals? Well, um, those that, of course, practical, we have alternative. We have alternative A, alternative B, and in some cases, alternative C. So those that meet the alternative A will now take the alternative B or C, which are yet to be written. Mm -hmm. And now what happens to the students after they are done the exams, especially in relation to the schools? You know, they were complaining the students had not finalized their school fees. So what happens then? Well, that is between the school and the Ghana Education Office. Okay. You know, why um, doesn't deal in, I mean, um, in these administrative issues when it comes to that, so far, so far as is concerned. So, but the good news is that the uh, students have been registered and they are going to take their exam. All right. So, and of course, their academic advancement will not be halted. So, that is a that's good news for them. Uh, all right. Thank you very much. I've been speaking with Reverend Samuel Olenu. He is the head of WAEC. He was updating us on the story about 38 students of the Agri Memorial School who were not registered before for the WASI examinations because they hadn't finished paying their school fees, but they have been registered now and they will be writing the WASI on Monday. Now, for many young people, the election petition hearing was the only real glance into how cases are argued in a Ghanaian courtroom. However, the Ghana Law School SRC Mood Court competition made it possible for law students to show their skills before judges. A Mood Court simulates an actual courtroom. It is a make-believe court situation where two groups of people argue a case out before a judge. It is the closest experience that law students have while at university to appear in court. Of course, the setting of such moot courts are held outside an actual courtroom. A typical moot court deals with a case which has already been judged in real life. So cases under consideration in a moot court competition deals with what the laws of Ghana say and not people's opinion like in a debate. 
the experience in arguing cases while in school provides a good ground for law students to enhance their skills before they go before judges in real life situations. Respect the lawyers. It is therefore the respondent's submission that the High Court of Appeal does not have jurisdiction to try rape summary, as the appellant have urged this court to decide. The presumption of innocence is a, necess a, a necessary but not a sufficient condition for the grant of bail. Mooting helps to build the confidence of students in public speaking, general research, and presentation skills. The second edition of the Ghana Law School SRC Moot Court session attracted Justices William Atuguba, Jones Doche, Sulek Badigbe, among others. Justice Atuguba was the presiding judge of the session with support from his colleague justices. The moot consisted of four speakers divided into two teams. Each team had a leading and supporting counsel. One team represents the appellant, those appealing the case. The other team are the respondents, also known as defendants. Arguments from both sides lasted over an hour. In this appeal, there are five issues to be determined. And I shall argue issues one and two, and the remaining issues will be taken up by my fellow counsel. From your submissions, are you convinced that uh, we are making a, a compelling case? Contrary to the position in 1960 when the law on rape was formulated, there are also instances where males are being violated by females. Justice William Atuguba then delivered his verdict. The, the first team uh, is nestled in the response. Prizes were given to the mooters for putting up excellent oral presentation and persuasive skills. Participants of the competition shared their experiences. It helped us to research into the law very well and um, although sometimes it may seem as if the case is tilted against you, when you do a good research it will point even the mind of the court to certain areas in the law which needs development. A moot or the courtroom kind of debate is completely different from the typical school debate. Um, there are courtroom manners that have to be observed, the way you present, even the tone of your voice and all that. Uh -huh. So I've really learned a lot. Um, it's actually a privilege to appear before these justices because they are people whose opinions and decisions contribute to the law reforms in Ghana. I would say it's a very beautiful experience and of course a very good preparation grounds for what we'll be experiencing in the future. And I'm sure you know that the Supreme Court is the apex at the very apex of the judiciary and for you to have the opportunity to stand before them and talk it's a very big opportunity and we are very much grateful. The Moot Courts competition was organized by African Heights Foundation. Okay, in many countries as part of legal education it exists and it is emphasized especially on issues of constitutionalism and human rights which affects people to encourage future lawyers to also take interest in public interest litigation. So the issues which are brought to be determined in moot court competitions are issues which affect the community so that lawyers will begin to think of how to use the law to solve the problems of a community as well as how to reform the law to make it better. We have acknowledged that at the law school a critical among the skills that the lawyer is supposed to develop is the skills of advocacy and uh, taking into account that you take a lot of courses at the law school you do not have much time to focus really on advocacy and so we thought that we have an opening in our law week how about we introduce legal advocacy as part of the Law Week, uh, you know, celebrations? Once again, electricity and water bills are to go up. They are called utility tariffs. Electricity is up by 2.6% and the water has been increased to 1.06% from the 1st of April. 
It's time to listen to your views. If you pay more, they'll get more capital to buy uh, raw materials, which will give us uh, uh, electricity. And also, if if we don't pay more, and if we are buying petrol, petrol, that one will be more than the one the electricity bill, electricity bill we are paying. So I think we should pay more because of the power crisis. Some people are losing their jobs, so they don't have money to pay excess money. I said that they will pay more, so that they will get more capital to run the work, so that we we'll get water and electricity. We are paying, we are paying, but still they are not providing us with our good service. So if we continue to pay, and they are, they are still not providing us with a good service, I think they, uh, if they increase it, we should, not, we should not go for it, but we should go against it. Because sometimes we use generator, and the generator, uh, a night, you can spend 15 cities on just petrol. So for... Um, for four days, you spend 80 Ghana uh, before the the light bill. The light bill also costs cost much. Then they are still adding more to it, so it's become a like a burden on Ghana. I urge all Ghanaians to pay so we will have power and electricity. As we are BEC candidates, we need the light to learn. I think it's good because the companies that are using the electricity are complaining bitterly about the power prices. And if you want to calculate the amount of money involved in buying the petrol and um, fuel for their generators, it's, it's, it's a huge amount of money. So I think they can use that money rather to pay uh, more electricity bills so that this power crisis will just stop. As of now, we are paying for it. It's not that we are not paying for it. We are paying for the services that they are giving to us. So as, as we are paying, they are bringing in this doom so doom so crisis. That's part the power crisis. So as this power crisis is in now, we cannot produce more. And they are asking us to pay more for them to increase. We don't know whether it's our payment that is not making them to. By head, there's no power. That's why the power crisis is going on. And I say it's money. So I don't know what to do. So my suggestion is no, we shouldn't pay that. Your views on WhatsApp. Now, Zuriel Oduwole is only 12 years old, but she's already fighting for something she believes in, girls' education. Zuriel's campaign known as Dream Up, Speak Up, Stand Up is a worldwide effort to encourage parents and society to take the education of girls seriously. The girl-child education has always been encouraged and every, every parent is really encouraged to send their children to school because when you have education, you have it all. And especially if you educate a woman, then of course you have educated a whole nation. That is what has driven this young girl called Zuriel Oduwale who has made it her passion to go out there to the world and let every ch girl child appreciate the need for education. Briefly tell us about your project. The uh, Dream Up Speak Up Standard Project, I started when I was 10 years old and I started it to inspire all the children here on the African continent, especially the girls, to stay in school, get a good education and also to accomplish their dreams. And so now I've spoken to in total over 21,000 children in nine different countries and so yes, I do hope to speak to more children and take it to more countries as well. What would you say to them to encourage them, to inspire them? Because you have the opportunity to do that. Well, what I'd say is that you should always make sure that you have a dream and then focus in life to accomplish your dream, accomplish your goal. And then also, someone who is successful is not someone who has never failed. Someone who is successful is someone who has failed but then never quits. How does it feel like to be an ambassador for Head? Um, well, I'm glad to be... I'm an ambassador for Hertz. They're really great friends. They provide me ground transport, so that way I can travel on the ground to like various different projects around both Nigeria and now Ghana. Let's go on to other stories now. And lockdown is the buzzword in some parts of Sierra Leone. The Sierra Leonean government has decided to keep everyone in the western area of the country indoors to help identify people infected with Ebola. So how is life under a lockdown? Ama has the answers. 
Sierra Leone's capital, Freetown, is usually full of life. Well, that until Ebola set in. There have been isolations and a lockdown of entire communities. The government has placed the western area that is part of the capital and towns around it on lockdown. These are the areas where Ebola has been difficult to control. The city and towns are nothing like they were before the deadly disease. They are empty and scarily quiet. That's the point of the lockdown, to keep everyone indoors or in their communities so that it will be easy to identify people with Ebola. Does it work? The government says it does, but there have been reports of people moving to escape the lockdown. Those who have symptoms tend to infect others wherever they choose to move to. So not everyone is in favor with their announced lockdown, but that's not the only reason. Life under lockdown is not fun. Security personnel mark a point where no one can cross. It's usually identified by a rope. Food supplies are sent in, but there's not always enough for everyone. All efforts at this point are necessary to win the crisis, because this is the moment when people can get unconcerned and allow the crisis to go on for much longer. Though everyone is affected, lockdowns are especially difficult for children. There's no playing or school. In fact, Pupils and students in Sierra Leone have been out of school for over six months since schools across the country shut down. There have been lessons on radio, but it will only be known if it's made an impact when the crisis is over. During this lockdown, though, Muslims are allowed two hours to visit the mosque for Friday prayers. Christians also get five hours to observe church service on Palm Sunday. But it doesn't change much for the children whose lives have been put on hold due to a crisis they had no control over. So what's the situation around the world? Now, I am sure you've heard of Flight 9525. If you haven't, it is the German Wings flight that went down on Tuesday, March 24th. The flight crashed with 150 people on board, including 16 students has a lot of people talking. Depression could well have been what caused the death of 150 passengers and crew on Tuesday, March 24. That is the latest in the developing aftermath of German Wings Flight 9525. The flight was en route to Barcelona, Spain and Dusseldorf in Germany when it came down on the Swiss Alps. The co-pilot of the flight is suspected of crashing the airline on purpose. He was alone in the cockpit of the plane when the aircraft took a dive. It is believed he refused to let the main pilot into the cockpit after he had left for a while. The pilot was intentionally locked out. All this was discovered through the plane's recorder known as a black box. Apparently, the co-pilot had been ill and had been prescribed pills for depression. Depression is more than just feeling sad and can make people feel like life is not nothing living. This is what investigators believe could have led co-pilots of the German Wings flight to crash the plane. There were 144 passengers on board the plane, four cabin crew and the pilots and co-pilots. German Wings officials say victims included 72 German nationals, including 16 students. There were also 51 Spaniards on board. The other victims were from Australia, Argentina, Britain, Iran, Venezuela, the US, the Netherlands, Colombia, Mexico, Japan, Denmark, and Israel made their souls rest in perfect peace. Let's catch up with some more news in a roundup.
Hospitals that take the national health insurance cards will not charge patients that go to the hospital with the cards. National Health Insurance Scheme card holders get their treatment paid by the government. The hospitals had been thinking about charging patients before giving them medical attention. This is because the National Health Insurance Authority, NHIA, was not repaying the monies for treatment. Now the NHIA says they will pay the hospitals what they owe them within two months. Musician Noella Wiala will be performing for Queen Elizabeth II this April. The news was announced on the official Twitter handle of the British High Commission in Ghana. Wiala will be singing at the Queen's 89th birthday party on April 11th in the UK. The Black Star squad for an international friendly match against Senegal is complete. All 22 invited players arrived at the Stars camp in Paris Wednesday evening. Ghana has now held two training sessions as they prepare to meet Senegal's Teranga Lions in Le Havre, France. Nigeria's government has denied that the Boko Haram forcefully took 500 children from the northeastern town of Damasak. A former resident told the BBC on Tuesday that the militants had taken almost 500 boys as they were fleeing the town earlier this month. Nigerian government spokesman Michael Mary said the number was lower, but he could not exactly say how many children had been taken. At least 19 people have been injured after an explosion in New York City, USA. Two buildings collapsed on Thursday afternoon. Officials say they believe work was being done to the building's gas unit before the blast. The explosion triggered a fire in a building with a sushi restaurant. The blaze then quickly spread to adjacent buildings. Now it's Palm Sunday already, Sunday, March 29th. The day marks the entry of Jesus Christ to Jerusalem. And guess what? We met some young people in procession with their palm branches on Friday. I think they made it a Palm Friday and they were marking Palm Sunday. They tell us the significance of Palm Sunday to young people. It is Friday and these young ones are already marking the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. They sing Hosanna as usual of Christians on Palm Sunday. The young ones do not really know the significance of the day yet, so they stick to singing. But the older kids say the day is meant for them to learn how to appreciate others. Today marks the entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. So today is the Palm Sunday and we are doing this because when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the people of Jerusalem were using palm fronts and their dresses to welcome Jesus into Jerusalem. Today has helped us a lot because not every day, it's not every day that we do this. So today the children are allowed to go out so they can have fun and explore them because they are always here because they are children. They are not allowed to go out every time. But then because they are out today, they are all happy as you can see, they are all happy. As a young person, it shows me that um, wherever Jesus is, there is joy and there is peace. So we should always try to welcome Jesus into our lives so we will have joy and peace everywhere. Happy Palm Sunday, everybody. Now, before we go, let's recap our top stories. And 38 students of the Agri Memorial Senior High School finally registered for the WASI examination, which begins on Monday. Students of the Ghana Law School in Accra have had a mock court session. We explored how life on lockdown affects children in Sierra Leone, and we met the 12-year-old advocate of girls' education. 
That's all we have time for in this edition of News Generation. Until next time, enjoy the rest of your weekend.